Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer. With me today is the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. And we are going to be discussing the top 10 ways that you can improve your website right now, today. This is what you can do. So, Tom, what is uh, the number one on the list? Let's just not mess around with this. What's number one? What, what can you do? Let's start with number one. Number one is keep it simple. And I know that we talk about simplicity and the power of simplicity in a lot of our podcasts. But it still is by far the top thing you need to do with your website. We've just finished in the last couple months a whole round of user testing studies with a couple clients. And one of the things we've seen is that just how complexity on a site makes it so difficult for users. And how users basically ignore almost everything that's on a website except for maybe two or three things. So. Um, Go back and, and do a little bit of research about what we call the 10 out of 10 rule, which means that 10 out of 10 people that visit your website should understand what you do and understand how to navigate the site. And then focus on your top three things. What are the top three things you want to communicate to web visitors? And then just leave it at that and keep, keep it very, very simple. That's number one. Well, why do you, I mean, when we talk about simplicity, why do we think websites get so complex and get bogged down with too much copy or too many graphics or really come up with a website that's that doesn't function the way it should. I mean, is this a problem between marketing not talking to the developer, not talking to the graphic designers? I mean, is there some correlation with that? Well, I think that the website designed by committee is one of the things we see with our clients where there's several people that have their hands in the website design project and then what happens is everybody has to have a part of what they bring to the table included and so you have you know very odd things on websites that people aren't looking for and you have you just have way too much and I think that one of the reasons why you see multiple navigation systems on websites is because during website design by committee someone has said well wait a minute we need to have these things well well our navigation is full better have another navigation item for that and then then you have three or four navigation menus and when you do user testing on sites like that no one can find anything everyone gets lost they can't figure out where to navigate they don't know what the key links start to go to and so they start using the site in a way that benefits them and they miss you know ninety five percent of what's on the website right so it has the opposite effect of what the website designed by committee wanted which was let's get more on the site and get more things looked at and fewer things get looked at. Now, is there a way to look at that if you have, a, I mean, if you're not a small business, if you're a, maybe a medium sized to large business, what's the best way to look at that so you don't have the website designed by committee? Well, come up with your, your top three things. What are the top three things that you want to explain to your marketplace? And then focus on those, Have and we're going to talk about a simple navigation system as well. Those are all part of it. But if you go into the process with less is more and let's keep it simple, you'll have better results from your site. Okay. Uh, what's the next one? Number two, have a great tagline. So one of the things we've seen uh, with, with in user testing and with people stumbling around sites is, well, what can they do for me and what what is this site about? The tagline really pulls that in. It's the first piece of content that gets noticed on your website. And we see a lot of taglines that are market marketing speak, they're slogans and they don't really make sense to a lot of people. <laughs> but you want a great tagline that basically says very succinctly what you do and what is your competitive advantage. That is very important. So pretty much less, what we're looking at is less content, more meat, if you will. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And, and uh, number three. Number three, use captions on all images. And, uh, and you know, this is something that we've been talking about for years and it's really starting to take off in social media. You can see it where you know people are getting thousands and thousands of views just because they post a little message with with a photo and one of the things we're starting to see now in social media is people holding up a handwritten message on a piece of paper and then taking a photo well it just makes that photo about a million times more important and more relevant because all of a sudden you can see what the photo is related to and so we think that all images and all photos on your website should have some kind of messaging with it and keep in mind that after someone looks at your tagline, they're going to look at your images and your photos, especially photos of people. And those photos have to really tie in to what is your tagline and what your company's about. And that's what a caption does on a photo, brings that all together. 
Now, you had mentioned, uh, you know, when we first kicked this off about navigation, that there's a second set of navigation and a third set of navigation and too That's much right. navigation. So number four. Number four navigation. is keep, keep <laughs> navigation intuitive because after someone sees that your site is easy to use, they understand what you do through your tagline, they look at your images and see your captions that reinforces the tagline, then they're going to go straight to navigation. And this will all happen within about 15 to 20 seconds, someone on your page, your home page. So when they look at the navigation, you've got to realize that navigation on websites is the most interactive part of the internet. The only thing that probably rivals that is search. Um, but on most websites, on most you know, medium-sized company websites, it's the navigation that's going to be critical. So keep that navigation very intuitive. Use link titles that make sense to users. Have one main navigation static on all your pages. And use about eight to ten menu items. If you start to get over maybe you know, ten to twelve menu items, then it gets complicated and people just start ignoring them. Is, uh, that, is that why people have uh, the multiple navigation systems is when they start breaking it apart into those yeah, they, they, they realize, well, wait a minute, how do we get to 10 or 12? We've got a list of 25. You know, well, no, all those links don't have to be on your home page. Um, those links can be from internal pages. If, if, the, if the navigation is set up intuitively, people will still find those pages. They don't have to be on your main navigation. If you look at website stats, you know, it's not uncommon for, for these secondary navigation pages to get, you know, less than half a percent of, of traffic. So, um, you know, the other thing is pull down menus. We recommend that you avoid pull down menus, and when you do use them, keep them very simple, only two or three items, and avoid fly out menus from fly out menus. You know, we, we don't want to see your website become a video game where people have to be really good with their mouse so they can click on a link. Um, this all comes back to, you know, doing your homework and setting this up properly before you build a website and keeping it simple. Well, speaking about building a website, I mean, HTML has been obviously evolving, and we have HTML5 now, and there's so many different platforms that you can use. What's going to be the best way to, to be able to develop a website now? I mean, we're we going back to just setting up and maybe using Dreamweaver or just going into your text editor and doing it that way, or should we be using another CMS like WordPress or Drupal or something? That yeah, we, well, number five is, is to build your website in WordPress. For the vast majority, of companies out there, WordPress is going to be the best platform. It's open source, it's a CMS, it's very simple to use. Now, if you if you want to build a website, we definitely recommend CMS. Now, WordPress is a simple version of CMS. Joomla is a little bit more complicated, and uh, Drupal is one of the most complicated. And it really depends on your goals for the site, but we just think ease of use is very important, and also the flexibility to go to any developer to be able to move the site, to have multiple you know, hosting environments, whatever, WordPress is really the clear winner right now for that. So number five is build your website in WordPress. Yeah, and it's simple. I mean, that's the whole thing is once it's set up and you have your shell set up, most internal people at, the, at your organization can update it without a problem updating the blogs, and obviously that helps your SEO rankings as well. That's right. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, coming down to number six, uh, Content marketing strategies. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, this is something that we probably wouldn't have even had on a top ten list like this even a year ago or two years ago. But now, content marketing is really why websites exist. And if you don't do content marketing, your site's going to be stale and it's not going to get any traffic. Now, we could do multiple podcasts on content marketing, and we have. But the the key thing is that you want to have a strategy around pulling people into your website, and that's got to be around content, not only for SEO but for them to understand what your business is about and so forth. And this goes ac across um, boundaries. Um, there's still a lot of industries that have a ways to go in this area. In fact, um, if you need to have your television repaired or a projector repaired, go do a few searches locally and you can see <laughs> that there's still a lot of industries that are a long ways off as far as approaching this idea of content and, and so forth. But you've got to have a content marketing strategy. It's, it's definitely on the top ten. Well, you know, and some of the things that, that people, I think, run into challenges, they go content marketing. We hear these buzzwords, content marketing strategy, content marketing strategy. Is that CMS? No, that is not CMS. Uh, what is but, it? Yeah. But what it is, is it's, it's a matter of being able to, to position yourself almost as a thought leader is where I'm seeing things going. And you, you bring up the example of television repair, projector repair. What would be a good idea for them? I think a YouTube channel setting up YouTube and taking videos of going, hey, how do you know if you need to take your TV to me? 
That's right. Well, I think that for like television repair or projector repair, it's just the credibility. You know, knowing that if we come and drop off the TV, it's going to get repaired in a timely fashion and get returned. It's not going to get lost in their workbench. You know, you're never going to see your TV again or they're going to break. I mean, you know, it's that trust factor. And if you have lots of content on your website, your trust factor just goes up tremendously. And it's, uh, not just, yeah. and it's not just content to have content out there. It's not write a blog post, write a blog post, but positioning it, it's like, well, you go as the expert. You're not trying to sell anybody anything, but you then position your website as a place to go for information. And it's, it's That's just, right, and, and you get more traffic from the search. This is so. exactly what we've been doing for the last six and a half years here at Intuitive Websites. This is part of the content marketing strategy. We, we have these podcasts we record for everybody to become more knowledgeable. It helps the industry as a whole and positions everybody, it positions us as thought leaders going, look, we're on top of the trends. We know where things are going. You should do the same thing in your industry. That's right, and we get this content from our real-life examples of what happens with us and our clients. I mean, this content is coming from, you know, the weekend and week out work that we do with our clients, so it's very relevant. Uh, let's go on to number seven. Uh, target your sweet spot keyword. That's so right. <laughs> back to keywords, back to Google and SEO and Bing, which is now making another big push. Uh, yes, they are. Let's talk about keywords. Well, the thing about keywords is that it can be overwhelming at some point. So the question that, that I would have for listeners is to let's simplify that a little bit and let's think about this. If you could get found for one keyword, what would that be? It would be a keyword or a keyword phrase. That's question number one. And then question number two is, well, is that keyword too competitive or do you have an opportunity to be found for that term? If not, pick another one. <laughs> so finally, you'll find a term that you feel like is a great sweet spot term for you, has plenty of traffic, and you have an opportunity to get found for it and then start building a content strategy to target that term. And we have lots of podcasts on how to do that, but I think that this does a, a couple of real important things. One is it brings your focus and awareness in on that term. So when you start writing and preparing content or looking at your title tags, you focus on that term. The second thing that it does is it really helps you get an idea of where you're positioning yourself on the web, what your services are about, what your product's about, and bringing those two together is usually a winning strategy. Once you get page one for that term and you sustain it with more content, then go to your next term and try to get page one for that. Well, let's also, you know, I want to remind everybody too is to, you know, we, we say keyword. What's your keyword? It's not one, it's not necessarily one single word. It could be long tail keywords in a series of a bunch of words together, uh, which obviously puts you more in a niche market. And that's something always to remember. That's right. And even if you target a key term, well, that one term of like three or four words, you're going to get the long tail around that. So that's why, you know, there's a lot of power just in that one focus of that term. And, um, and I, I think that everyone should have their short list of keyword phrases they want to be number one for. But they got to know if it's, if it's too competitive and they can't do it, or is there not enough traffic to make it worth your time? You've got to know those two things. Like real estate. There's a, there's a big one for right. you. There, you know, if you want to get specific, you need to get specific on where you are. Um, That's real right. estate is big. Is it commercial real estate, Colorado Springs? That's it's more targeted and targeted. You know, you can target by words or you can target by location, which is another way. Well, and you know, when you start talking targeting and, and all of that. It kind of moves us into number eight as far as using analytics. That's right. And and so what we've seen in the last few months is the importance of Google Webmaster Tools. Now, it's been out, Google Webmaster Tools has been around for a while, but basically what Webmaster Tools is doing is saying you've got to be set up with us and communicate with us so that we'll rank your site properly. So Google Webmaster Tools is, is very, very important. It's your communication with Google. Um, you know, it's only been recent that you could actually even call Google on the phone. <laughs> you know, they just have not been into this two-way communication thing. They just want to give you information through their searches and ads. But now with Google Webmaster Tools, you can communicate to Google. Um, and you can say to Google, come and index my site and tell me what you think my site is about. And then you can see if those keyword phrases that you've really targeted are showing up uh, in Google searches and through um, Google displaying your site and indexing it. So Google Webmaster Tools is a very, very important tool. Right now, it's, it's actually a little more complicated than it should be. Uh, there's a lot of very techie terms in there as far as how it's set up. But I think over time, you're going to see Webmaster Tools more simplified, much more easier to use, but a critical part of SEO. And a lot of people still don't use it. Most of the sites we build or, or start to market 
it's one of the first things we have to do is set up webmaster tools because they don't have it set up and that's also you know part of analytics it's and critical part of so, analytics absolutely so when people are going oh well you're talking about google webmaster tools that's something new we're talking about analytics and we're kind of wrapping it in there absolutely well you know going to the next type uh, the, the next piece uh, for number nine is is design and I think we talked about that, you know, in the beginning is the website by committee. When it comes down to it, who are you designing for? That's right. You're not designing for the committee. <laughs> the websites are not designed for the site owner, which is kind of a thing that you shouldn't have to say, but we still see that all the time. Websites should be designed for the target market, for the audience. And still, I, I, I mean, you know, in 2013, and we still see this, where, you know, the websites are designed internally by committee or for the website owner, and that design doesn't fit the needs of the people coming in. And this is a little bit beyond usability. This is for the look and feel of the website and the photos that are used and so forth. Just keep that in mind. Graphic design should be designed for the audience and ask that question as you go through that process. You know, which comes into the next thing is to find out, you know, is it actually targeted to the visitor? And that moves us to number 10, which is conducting market research. Right. And then market research and, and you know, user testing, which is what we, one of the things we do, is so important for us when we do this podcast because the user testing really drives a lot of our ideas about what you're seeing in these podcasts. Um, Usertesting.com is an excellent resource if you haven't used that. Or even informal phone surveys um, where you get someone on the phone and you just have them walk through some tasks on your website or even do some basic screen sharing with join.me or with um, GoToMeeting. That is just is going to give you invaluable resource or information and you only need about five or ten minutes with the user before you get lots of valuable information. I would use number 10 to verify what was number one on this list, which is the idea of keeping it simple and finding your top three things that you want to promote on your site or talk about on your site. Who should be the ideal person to do user testing? Well, it's, it's a very good question. I, and I think that pretty much anyone can do user testing, but you have to remove yourself from that process. You have to be basically a removed observer who's asking questions and trying to get inside the head of a user. Um, so, you know, the, the website owner may not be the best person, but in a lot of cases that's the only person that can do this. Well, I guess I should say is who should be doing the user test? Who should be the user? Oh, who should the, be the on user? On the user and should it be somebody who's in your target clientele range? Absolutely. So, so they already understand what you're doing instead of trying to go after, a, you know, having a 10-year-old go to an automotive website to try to buy a car. It might be a little different. <laughs> you want to have you want to have someone in your marketplace absolutely familiar with your marketplace. Now, the nice thing about user testing is you only need about five or seven people, and you're probably going to get 80, 90 percent of, of the issues or feedback. And you certainly will get those top three things from only five to seven users. So it's very important market research. Well, I think that's our that's our top ten there. So Tom, what would be our key action items from this podcast? Well, I, you know this this podcast and, and and others like it are just great checklists. I mean, this is, this is really your checklist to get started on improving your website or building a site from scratch, because this certainly applies to new websites as well. Um, one other thing I want to note is to be aware of page changes whenever you do this. So if you're changing a URL or the name of a page, make sure you set up a 301 redirect so those pages in Google will, will find the new site or the new pages. And then also keep in mind that every website's unique, but that these 10 rules really do apply to all websites across the board. So, you know, take them in, learn from them, use them as a checklist as you improve your website. Thanks so much, Tom. And folks, thanks for joining us again for the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. And we hope you can use these top 10 lists here to improve your website. Thanks for joining us.